welcome. Um, this is Admiral's Academia. This is the class will be Growth in Isolation, Amp Guard Edition, of course. Um, I'm Admiral Ann Cath. Most folks just call me Admiral. Uh, if you're here with me, uh, it would it would mean a lot if you could just uh, say hi in chat so I can know who all is here. Um, we're having some folks that are coming in a little bit later, so just don't want to rush in too quickly, but there is a decent amount of folks here now, so. Um, okay. So, just a little a couple of housekeeping things. Uh, just as usual, standard procedure stuff. Um, if at any point during this class you have any questions, please feel free to uh, tag me and uh, post them in the chat here. Uh, you can also uh, do so on our Nine Blades Discord. Uh, I'll be monitoring that as well. Again, please just tag me because uh, it'll be a lot easier for me to be able to, to see it because there is a lot of chat in chat. Uh, additionally, if you would like a credit for this class, please go to our Nine Blades Discord. Uh, use the, the standard AmpGuard bot, uh, just as you would in your own kingdom. And feel free to just uh, put your name in there and give yourself credit for today. Okay. I think we are okay. Do, do, do. Let's begin. Okay. So again, this is uh, growth in isolation. Um, I'd like to sort of start off with a, a little bit of a perspective thing, um, kind of an explanation of uh, why I'm teaching this class. A lot of times I will, uh, I'll have probably 15 to 20 classes in my mind of just ideas of the classes I want to teach coming up, um, but which ones I do in the order that I do them in has a lot to do with uh, the conversations I'll have throughout the week. Uh, with members of my, my kingdom and uh, members of other kingdoms as well when I'm visiting others um, online, of course. And uh, this sort of this sort of came up rather recently as uh, our, our area got hit with um, a bit of a setback. Um, we had a lot of a lot of active cases come in like a single day and restrictions here of uh, moved back significantly. So um, I know for a lot of people that was uh, a bit of a hard hit um, and it reignites that conversation of um, kind of fear and dread and how long is this going to be and all of that and um, so I, I really wanted to do this class now. Um, a um, little perspective also on uh, why me? Why am I teaching this? Um, I am I am very open about all my medical things. I, I think that it's important. Um, I, I want to sort of normalize uh, medical things uh, for those of us that have chronic pain and chronic illness. Um, that it isn't a taboo thing. It's not something that we should be ashamed of. Uh, and if we are not able to... Uh, to speak out about it and uh, communicate with others, uh, we're gonna just keep on, you know, masking and we're gonna keep on hiding ourselves away, and um, we're not gonna be able to ask for the help that we need to be able to be uh, more present in this game uh, and to be able to be with our friends. So, um, I am in a very unique situation because uh, I am used to isolation. A lot of folks are experiencing uh, quarantine and isolation for the first time in their lives. Um, what what we're in right now is not not that big of a difference from my normal day to day life uh, pre COVID. Um, I myself only ever leave the house once a week, uh, and that's to go to Ampgard. I, uh, I I do not leave my home otherwise. Um, due to uh, my medical issues, uh, I have to spend a lot of time. Uh, in my bed, or on this couch right here, <laughs> um, and it, it takes a great deal to, to be able to actually go out and participate in things. Um, I have to use medication, uh, medical devices, uh, compression gear, um, depending on the level of what things are, either, you know, McCain, a walker, or my wheelchair, depending on uh, how I'm doing that day. 
Um, but my my normal everyday life is uh, usually in a laying down position, pillows everywhere. Um, this is the secret just between us. This is all uh, backed with pillows, so I'm actually uh, propped up and I'm actually using uh, things to hold up my spine right now as well. So uh, sort of secrets just uh, just between us, <laughs> as I say this online. <laughs> um, so I wasn't always like this. Uh, this wasn't this. I wasn't born like this. I didn't have this all of my life. I actually went through most of my my adult life uh, and adolescent years and childhood uh, being extraordinarily active. Uh, it used to be this thing where, uh, you know the saying, burning candles at, at two ends, my philosophy in life was more of, uh, that was uh, too slow for me, uh, so I would just take a blowtorch right to the middle and, and get it over with. Um, so uh, after the, the car crash, um, everything changed. Uh, and that's when um, the fibromyalgia was triggered and um, my my other medical things started becoming uh, far more chronic. Um, so it, uh, it was sort of the, the catalyst of, of where I'm at right now. And uh, so it was, I progressively got worse as, as we went. Um, and spinal issues too because of the, the crash injuries um, so I I also have uh, procedures done in my my uh, top four and bottom four vertebrae every six months so uh, I'm also very used to having long stints of not being able to play so um, this is very normal for me uh, and now I I'm going from going out once a week to only going out uh, maybe once every three months kind of thing. Um, and when I go out, it's to have a procedure done. I'm not like going out and, and seeing folks and hanging out and doing things. So um, I kind of want to sort of just uh, pass on the knowledge that I've learned through this time and um, sort of the coping skills that I learned along the way and sort of just um, the knowledge that this this won't always be like this and um the more time you're in it the more time that we're in this isolation and quarantine it does uh it does get easier with time um it becomes i don't want to say normal because this is not going to be your normal uh this is not going to be something that you're always going to deal with um for me uh, this is standard and um i still enjoy my life i still enjoy what i do i still have other ways to participate in this game and um i want to give you the peace of mind that this does not have to be um devastating that there's a way to do this uh where you can find peace and you can find happiness. Um, so I want to, to help sort of kickstart that, that spin around. So um, that's where we're at. I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach you my tips and tricks. So let's get right into it. Um, and again, if you have any cl uh, questions uh, throughout this, please uh, feel free to just uh, tag me. I'm here. I'm here, I'm listening. Um, let's do it. Okay, so um, first and foremost, this the first step that you need to do in this is uh, introspective. Um, there's some questions you need to ask yourself before you can really um, delve deep into solutions. Uh, you have to understand the problem. You have to understand. Um, what is getting to you? What is hitting you? Um, when dealing with isolation, the, the two major things is usually anxiety and depression. Um, and each one will give you, it's possible to have both at the same time. It's possible to 
bounce back and forth between the two, it's possible to have one and not the other. So, um, oh gosh, and if you have one or the other, they're usually uh, very different sensations, very different experiences, and uh, how you deal with them will also be different. So, um, the first thing is going to be figuring out where you are, where's your base. Um, so, it, it might seem silly, it might be seem uh, overly simple, uh, but actually like write it out. You, you might be saying, what's my problem? I'm stuck inside. I can't go and play Amp Guard. Um, it's deeper than that. It's deeper than that. Um, so, so ask, ask the really tough questions and then actually find the words for it. Actually write them out. Um, and if you don't write them out, say them out loud. Uh, talk to a friend and actually uh, vent, be open, be vulnerable. Uh, the big thing is going to be being vulnerable. And, oh, I know that's hard. I know that's extraordinarily hard. Um, it's, it's hard to be in a position where you talk about um, weaknesses, uh, fears, doubts, dread. Um, it's a hard topic, but... Uh, it festers if you keep it in and that fester will only cause you more stress and anxiety and pain uh, so it is extraordinarily important that you address what those feelings are that you're experiencing um, and again I I cannot stress enough how important it is to remember that this is not the new normal um, this is this is a moment, all moments pass. Um, we will not be, <laughs> you will not be in this forever. Um, this, this changes in time. And I, I would like for this first moment to uh, kind of look back. It's been over six months. I, I bet it didn't feel that long. Um, if you actually just map it out um right the, the running sort of you know phrasing it is that like oh it feels like it's been forever it's just unending but actually think of actually how long six months is six months to be stuck inside uh to not be able to play amp guard to not be able to um to see your friends give them a hug and high five um it's, it's pretty extraordinary how long um, we've pushed through this and we are still here. Um, and I mean that in a rather literal sense. Uh, despair can do some pretty horrific things and um, we have lost folks along the way to this. So I want to stress do not let this in. Uh, do not let this consume you because it is a moment and all moments pass. Um, so I want to sort of share um, sort of a, a thing that has always helped me. I collect pocket watches. How I deal um, with moments of uh, extreme pain is being hyper focused on the fact that it is a moment it is comforting to me to actually watch time pass I can see that it's moving that it is constantly moving and pushing forward there is no moment where that stops and absolutely no moment where that goes back it doesn't slow down it doesn't change it is consistent always moving pushing forward and it is a thing that no matter what's happening to me, it will always be pushing me forward. So if you are having an anxiety attack, if you are having a moment of um, panic and dread, look at a clock. Just keep that visual in your mind. Just keep telling yourself like a mantra 
This is a moment and all moments pass. So think back at the mo a moment where you were the sickest you've ever been. Uh, maybe a moment where just the worst pain in your life. Maybe a surgery or a broken bone or something. In that moment, I, I bet it was extreme. I bet in that moment you felt like it was never going to stop. That it would just be this. Look at where you are right now. How long has it been since you thought about that moment? How long has it been since you focused on how long and, and unending that moment was? It wasn't. It passed. It was a moment. You push forward. So that's where we're now. This is a moment and all moments pass. So this is the new drinking game for today. Remember to hydrate uh, and drink along. If you have some water, uh, go for it. So every time I say it's a moment and all moments pass, hydration. Okay. So we've gone over little mind stuff, uh, gone over, you know, those tough questions putting into words. Um, I want to go over now, um, and again, if you have any questions at any point, please, um, feel free to message me on our Discord or here in the chat. Um, but at this point, I want to go over some coping mechanisms because uh, these will be essential. These will be absolutely essential uh, to get through those moments. Um, and again, right, for, for me, it's, it's pocket watches, right? And I have them in I have them in all shapes and sizes and designs. I, I have so many, um, but also because I keep breaking them, <laughs> uh, the batteries uh, go or I overwind them or something silly like that. Um, I don't tend to buy expensive ones. So <laughs> that's also a thing. They all the secrets of me today. Um, coping mechanisms. Um, there are positive and negative coping strategies. Uh, it's going to be important for you to know which one's which. Um, please avoid um, coping mechanisms that will put you in danger. Um, avoid excessive alcohol. Avoid um, recreational drugs. Um, this is a hard topic, jeez. Um, it's in moments of dread and um, despair, some folks will go to extremes to make that feeling go away. Um, I cannot express how crucial it is that you do not use the negative coping strategies uh, because you will be endangering your life. Um, and when this moment passes, um, you might be stuck still doing those negative coping mechanisms. Um, and those might not just be, you know, one of those two things that I previously mentioned. Uh, they could be all sorts of things. Um, it could be nervous eating, it could be um, smoking excessively. Um, Some folks do cutting, some folks do all sorts of uh, things. And again, it's a lot of just, um, some folks do it to numb themselves. Some folks, it is to sort of uh, time manipulation. Um, it's trying to change the feeling that they have by using something else that will mask cover or put a bandaid on it temporarily. Um, but again, this is not the new norm. This is going to go back to what we used to do. Um, so if you get into the habit in that routine of any sort of negative coping mechanism, uh, it will become extremely difficult to go back. Uh, you'll get into a sink in a, in a rhythm and uh, that will be hard to break. Uh, routine can be hard to break once you have it. So be gentle with yourself um, and be kind to yourself and do not put yourself um, or others at risk. Um, so, but 
going back into the positive now. Sorry, there's a lot of, a lot of hard topics here. Um, positive coping mechanisms. Let's go for some positives here. Um, distraction is going to be crucial. <laughs> Um, so, so incredibly crucial, uh, when you are having, um, oof, um, intrusive thoughts, uh, if, if you are having, uh, moments of spiraling, where you say something in your mind and you jump to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing, well, what if, oh gosh, but what if, how will, oh no, but then, Got that off right there. Uh, as soon as you can tell that you're you're jumping into that spiral, uh, imagine a gigantic stop sign that just appears in front of you in such a massive size that you physically cannot go forward. You see it and it's a giant, just bright red sign with a white gigantic letters that just says stop. Just focus on that halting moment, that just, that urgent, sign that says stop you can recognize what it is and for those that have experienced those spirals you know what those are you know where it starts and you know when it starts to tip um it's like flushing down a drain um if you drop something into a toilet and you flush it uh there is a point to where you can grab the item and there's a point to where it's gone um if you let it go too far, you're not going to be able to stop the thing from going. So, again, it's a visualization thing. Um, just how I use my pocket watch is a visual to watch time pass. Because this is the moment all moments pass. Take a drink. <laughs> um, use that stop sign. That visual, um, that visual thing in your mind to just go, nope, whoa, stop, nope, got it, just stop sign. What do you do from there? You have to fill that space in that thought with something else. So, distraction. Uh, so what you need to do is find what distractions work good for you. What are positive things for you? Now, uh, this can vary uh, drastically from one person to another. There is no wrong answer unless that it is a negative thing that will cause damage to yourself, damage for, to others, or damage to objects of which uh you are not willing to lose <laughs> right uh if you want to rip up a paper plate uh you do you uh, right uh so long as you're not hurting yourself or others um that's sort of the sort of the bar there right um if if it is the middle of winter and there is a snowman outside and you just need to vent your frustration you get a bunch of you know, snowballs and you just chuck it at this snowman as hard as you can. Cool, you're not hurting others, you're not hurting yourself. Um, though I'm... I'm not sure where snowman rights are. Um, if you've ever seen Doctor Who, I mean, they could come come for you. So I, I, be cautious on that one. But uh, more or less, you, you should be fine. So, um, other things. Uh, consider video games. Things that are more like immersive, things that are um, sensory, right? Uh, things where you have visuals, that you have sound, you have things to block out. Um, sound is really, really good. Uh, things with sound is very, very good because uh, you, it's very hard to think of your own thoughts when you are focused on sound, especially like words and things like that. Um, but there is, there's a couple other things that will actually um, affect your mood. So. Um, it is extremely hard uh, to be in a depressive state when you're watching really funny things. Um, I know that sounds a little silly, and and uh, when you're in that moment going, how? How is that even? There's no possible way. Try it. <laughs> Try it. Um, you know, it, it might not be like... Uh, like SNL or something, right? Uh, where there's like comedy skits or something, but like uh, kittens doing silly things. Animals are hilarious. <laughs> um, they're adorable and you just kind of do this like, oh, thing, or maybe that's just me. <laughs> um, speaking of which, let's see if we can get Trey to come hang out with us for a bit. Yeah. Um, 
it it but mood inhibiting things. There we go. Hi, bud. This is my cat, right? If you have not um, seen my videos before. Hey, buddy. Anyway, um, so that's always you know something to consider. Um, other things that are mood inhibitors, uh, music. Uh, I was actually a music therapy major, so I I do this one a lot. <laughs> um, be careful of what you listen to, because music can change your mood. Um, if you listen to something that is extremely depressive, that is deep and dark, your mindset will go there. Um, it will keep you in that, and it could actually trigger the spiral to go farther. Um, so whatever you're listening to uh consider how it will affect your mood and, and find um the type of music that you respond well to um for some folks it's just really chipper um things some you know like in a major key um i am i'm different i find that that sort of music to be kind of annoying. Um, sorry for anyone that likes that stuff. Um, I like, I like songs that are like empowering, that have, um, just strength to them. Uh, that sort of is my pick me up, that sort of like, yeah, I've got this, let's do it. Um, I like things that are more slower. I like things that have a deep bass beat to it. Um, a lot of just strength songs. Um, it's sort of like um, it's sort of like uh, watching a fireworks show, right? You get that sort of like in the middle of your chest. Um, side note, uh, one thing that will affect this also is how you're listening to it. Uh, I would highly suggest uh, that you use headphones. Um, again, this is a sensory thing. This is an experience thing. Um, Going back to the fireworks thing, right? If you are watching a fireworks show live, that is going to be an extraordinarily different experience than watching it, for instance, on your phone, right? In that moment, the bright lights with the contrast of the darkness around you, the percussive boom, right, that you can actually feel in the middle of your chest. Um, if you're watching it on your phone, you are not gonna have the same experience. So, um, Again, if you're using music as a distraction, as a mood inhibitor, if you're using it to change um, where, you, where your head's at, um, it's important that it, it be uh, all-encompassing, that it becomes an experience for you. So headphones really, really help with that. Um, and it really helps to block out uh, other uh, noises. And again, right, it's a sensory thing as well. Um, for, for those that do have anxiety and uh, sensory overload, right? Um, you're gonna be hearing everything and those things are going to be triggering for you. It's going to uh, build to that anxiety sort of thing. Um, so it's, it's important to block that, right? Um, also, for those that are struggling with sleep, um, white noise is really good. Um, Cause again, when you're in isolation, um, sleep can be an issue for you too. Uh, so uh, practice good sleep hygiene is, is sort of what the, the phrase is. Um, make sure that you're not uh, eating or drinking uh, sugar, caffeine, chocolate, things like that anywhere uh, near bedtime. Um, things that will, uh, like if you exercise and stuff, um, Things that will uh, get your heart racing and um, your dwarf is going, you're just, um, that's not good for sleep. <laughs> um, being in a dark space will help. If it's bright, your, your brain's going to think that it's daytime, that you're not supposed to be sleeping. Um, avoid screens. Uh, and if you do have something right uh there's a neat thing on your phone if you watch stuff on your phone where uh you can turn on to night mode uh basically it's the the blue lights that uh trigger your um state of awakeness um and if you put your phone on night mode it pulls in the more um 
like amber tones like uh, oranges so um it sort of tricks your mind into sort of like i don't want to say like that sunset sort of like oh this is night this is we're going into a time where it's like it's getting darker it's less less sensory stuff um so that's sort of again tips and tricks um Sometimes it can help for if you like. What I used to do is I would have uh, like Netflix on my phone, and I would put on when it was there uh, Futurama because I had seen that stuff so many times. I knew all the episodes. It wasn't like I was engaged in listening to it. And I would have, I'd have the night mode on, but I'd flip it upside down and I'd stick it under my pillow, um, and I would just hear them talking when I went to sleep. Um, specifically because I knew what they were saying. Uh, I knew that uh, I wasn't invested in the episode. It wasn't new. It wasn't uh, something that I was like hyper-focused on. Um, but it having the words made it impossible for me to think of my own words um, in those moments. So I cannot uh, think and keep my brain being super active uh, thinking of ideas and things I want to do if uh, there are words. Uh, it literally blocks it and I can't. Um, what I do now is uh, I, I have a soundtrack of just rain. Um, it's just rain in a bunch of different places. It's like rain in the woods, rain on a beach, it's just rain in a, a tropical forest. It's just rain. It's like a whole entire album of rain. Um, but it's white noise. Uh, for me, it's when when at AmpGuard events uh, and it's the middle of the night and it's raining and there's thunder and, and lightning and stuff. And it's sort of just this calm. You know, you're you know surrounded with friends, but you're in this this like you're in isolation. You're in you know by yourself. You're just chill but you know that you have all of that support um, around you and you're in a place that you are extraordinarily happy. So um, for me, that's where, where my mindset goes to when I, when I hear rain now. Um, so that has been helping me sleep. Um, but I also, I wear earplugs um, and then I have that going again, flipped upside down um, under the pillow so it's also muffled, but uh, it's white noise, right? And I've got the I've got the earplugs in to filter out uh, different sounds that are around me, right? Because um, I have to have like the air conditioner on and stuff, and uh, I need to be able to block out those random sounds. You know, my cat tried running around the house. You know, the four a.m. zoomies. Um, it's just all sorts of things. Um, so yeah. Um, Listening to nature sounds, classic piano music. Yep. It's a personal preference, right? Um, it's it's what works for you. So again, these are these are tips and tricks. These are what things have worked for me. It's gonna be important that you find what works for you. There is not a wrong or right answer for this. Um, it is your personal preference. So find what that thing is for you and just try it, right? Experiment with things. Some things might work great and some things not so much, uh, but you won't know until you try. So um, experiment, try stuff. Uh, the most important thing is that you take this time um, to make a shift. Um, there is someone near and dear to me, um, one of the bravest women I have ever met. Uh, she once told me this, this quote. She said that she couldn't change her situation, but she could change her attitude about it. Uh, and that hit me so strongly. Um, we can, we can succumb to this. We, we could give up, give in, um, and accept that this is a terrible, sad, tragic time. Or we could say, Look how extraordinarily strong we are. Look at the enormous amount of support and love that is going on in the entire world. The fact that we are in an entire world fighting this together 
that we are not alone in the most in the most absolutely depressing time where we are quite literally isolated from each other we are together and that's how we're gonna get through this we're gonna get through this together so some things to consider you are not doing this alone so talk with the others that are experiencing this too again that vulnerability because it, it is important for you to let it off your chest but you know what your friend also needs to let it off their chest too and i i'm absolutely certain that they would appreciate being able to talk to you and talk with you and talk talk it out and help you and be able to be helped as well so reach out to your friends um go through your friend list and go gosh who haven't i talked to in forever um how about I just do a quick check-in? Um, pulling back to Ampgard now. Um, right now, we have several kingdoms that are on Discord. Uh, for those of us in the Nine Blades, we are on Discord almost every single day. Um, we have feature park nights uh, from 6 to 10, uh, Monday through Friday. Um, this is actually literally part of our feature park night right now this is it you're here welcome <laughs> um we have just a bunch of things that we do we do um ans nights we do classes we do quests we do just hangouts just you know do whatever you're doing but doing it with your friends um talking with folks being present and um being part of the community um and by all means, if you are watching right now and you are uh, someone from another kingdom, you are more than welcome to join us on those nights at any time. Um, it is not just an exclusively a Nine Blades Kingdom thing. Uh, we have a lot of visitors from a bunch of kingdoms, and I'm absolutely positive uh, that we would love for you to come join us as well. So the invitation is there. Come join us. Come meet some more friends. Um, I'm there every night, so uh, come hang out. I want to meet you. Uh, let's do this. Um, other than that, right, uh, check out your own kingdom's uh, situations. See if they're doing something on Discord, if they have uh, something that they do on Zoom or some other sort of uh, social gathering mechanism. Uh, it's important to be able to hear each other um, is going to be one thing. Uh, seeing each other is even better. If you can do that, that's amazing. Um, but being able to hear each other is actually uh, pretty pretty significant, um, and I know for for myself and uh, for a lot of us that were there right from the very beginning that uh, it was a huge support mechanism for us. Um, just knowing that uh, even though you couldn't see them, that they were still there, you could hear them. Um, just having that support and remembering, you know, again, you're not alone and you're in a moment, uh, and all the moments passed. Take a drink. Um, <laughs> hydration is important. Self care is so important. Oh my gosh, self care, guys. Self care. Make sure you're keeping hydrated. Make sure that you are eating. Uh, make sure that what you eat are eating has good nutrients and vitamins and all of that good stuff. Uh, treat your body right. Um, it's the only one you got. So uh, be kind to it. Um, <clears throat> on that note, uh, make sure that you're exercising to. Um, I know for a lot of us, our main, you know, source of exercise is going to Ampgard. Um, so I'm going to challenge you to find ways of exercising in whatever space that you got. Um, what you see here is not very big. Uh, and this is where I exercise every day. Um, I do a lot of like yoga, Pilates, that sort of thing. Um, cause in weight training stuff like there's uh, a lot of restrictions I have due to my you know uh, medical stuff but uh, low impact things are, are good um, stretching stretching is great um, one big thing right if you are if you are stuck in your house the the whole whole day um, and you're just sitting on the couch uh, your body will lock up uh, thank you for someone who knows <laughs> um, stretching is is gonna really 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 help with you 
Um, and also, again, if you can do some sort of um, weight stuff, uh, even if it's just like uh, resistance stuff, using your own body weight to help uh, lift yourself and stuff like that. Um, it doesn't have to be some crazy like weight training regimen or something like that, but um, you need to be able to make sure that you are not having um, atrophy. You don't want your muscles to go through atrophy. Uh, if you start losing your muscle mass, uh, you're going to get a lot weaker and it's going to be harder to function and move and um, it's going to be harder to exercise and it's going to get to a point to where um, it burns really bad when you do very simple things like walking. Um, lifting up just like a water bottle can uh, burn really bad. Um, atrophy is something that I experience a lot, um, particularly after my, my surgeries. Because there's a lot, like, it's a month of basically being in a laying position, not doing anything. Um, and I get it really bad in my legs, in particular. Um, so it burns really bad uh, to have to just, like, walk to go get a drink or to, you know, uh, go to the washroom. So, um, another super, like, super secret, right? Uh, I have, like, a little cart that I have uh, that I'll tuck my legs underneath me and I'll... <laughs> Uh, almost like a skateboard kind of thing, and I will roll around the house on my hands. <laughs> um, the biggest thing is find what works for you. Um, never give up, never surrender. You uh, push through it and you do it by any means necessary. Um, don't let anything stop you. Um, if you've got the willpower to do it, you are indomitable. Um, so do not forget that in this moment, it's going to be extraordinarily crucial that you do not forget that, um, you are so incredibly strong and you won't know it until you are put in these, in these extraordinary moments. Um, we are in an extraordinary moment and all moments pass. Take a drink. <laughs> um, So give yourself a huge amount of credit. Um, this is unprecedented for us in our particular lifetimes. Um, this is a, a, a heck of a fight. And for, for a lot of folks, it's a life and death fight. Um, it takes a great amount of strength to self-sacrifice keep yourself inside to protect others. Uh, if you yourself are not in a, um, in a high risk situation. Um, but I also want to express the, the seriousness of, um, not, some folks are not taking this, uh, seriously. They are treating this like it's the flu. Um, side note, there's a lot of people that die from the flu every year. Just, it's not, um, they don't talk about it on the news, they don't share it, but, um, yeah, there's, there's thousands of people that die from the flu every year. This is extraordinarily more deadly than that. And it does not discriminate. Um, it doesn't matter if you are in peak health, uh, it, it, it can kill you. And, uh, that was a big thing that they discovered, uh, pretty early on in, in New York City, I believe it was. Um, a lot of their death rates were folks in their 20s and 30s. Um, so as amp guarders, right, uh, that's a lot of, a lot of our range. So I know I've been hearing it a lot that, um, the argument that, oh, well, I'm, I'm super healthy and stuff, so why should I have to stay inside? If, if it's just you're not in a thing, then you stay inside. I'll go out and play. Um, please don't be naive. <laughs> um, please understand how serious this is. Um, it does not discriminate. 
uh, it it's serious it's very very serious and for those that uh, do survive it the experience itself can be extraordinarily severe um, I uh, back in March um, I experienced a, a virus that attacked my lungs and um, I still haven't exactly uh, recovered from it fully um, I am still extraordinarily dependent on my inhaler um, and it's it's been it's been very hard it's been very hard um, and it got extraordinarily serious and it was something that I really didn't uh, I didn't talk with folks about and I uh, When you have to make uh, some really, really, really difficult choices, things having to do with um, like wills and, and stuff, um, it's a moment that you need to assess your life. It needs it needs to be a moment where um, you need to know what you want to leave behind. You. Um, you want to make sure that you live your life to the fullest and that uh, you don't take a single day for granted. Um, so, that's another switch. Um, please don't take a single one of these days for granted. We never know how long we've got. And uh, a lot of people sort of assume that that'll be old age that'll get you and that's not true uh, some folks are lucky enough to be in that situation but a lot of folks are not so in a time where we are in danger um, this is the time to appreciate your life and appreciate the moments and um, use the time you have wisely so take this op time as an opportunity an opportunity to do some things that you uh, perhaps didn't have time for before. Where uh, if you're not working, if you're working less, if uh, if you are in a time where you are secluded and alone and you're at home uh, for long periods of time, um, this is the point to pull yourself up by your bootstraps and um, start attacking some goals you got. Uh, so again, back into the ant guard. What is your goal? What is the next thing you want to achieve? Don't have it be something gigantic that is like, if you're day two in the ant guard, um, the goal should not be, I want to be a knight. Um, eight years down the road, absolutely. You can do that, and I believe in you, okay? So that's definitely a goal to have, but you need smaller goals that lead up to it. So small attainable goals and checklists. Um, it is extraordinarily satisfying to be able to have a list of things, um, small tiny things that you can check off when you're done. And then you go and you look at the list and go, wow, I've accomplished quite a lot um, and they can be very small things very small things uh, if you go through just your day you just your normal day uh, do this as as an experiment put every single thing that you do in a day write it out and have a checkbox and every time you complete one of those things check the box right so uh, get dressed in the morning uh, have breakfast take a shower get into your routine every single one of those have a box and every time you, you finish the thing you check a box at the end of the day look at the list of everything that you did it's more than you think um, and it's really good to actually see it to see it written out um, and here's the, the sort of caveat to that 
Some folks will not be able to do much. Uh, depending on their situation, depending on their health, um, they might be able to change their clothes and get to the other room and watch some shows and that's their day. Um, if that's what you can do, then you've succeeded. You did what you could handle, you did what you could, uh, and you made the choices and you fulfilled them. You should feel accomplished from that. You should not have any, um, don't be hard on yourself. Um, don't think, oh gosh, I, I should have done this, I could have done that, if I wasn't like this, maybe I could have done this and this, and oh, I know other people that are doing all of these things, and I could only do this. It's your life. It is your path, and only you can walk it. Do not compare yourself to others. Know your route. That's yours. No one else is going to come and walk your path for you. And nor can you go and walk the path of others. It's yours. So take ownership of it. Walk as many steps of that path in a day that you can. Just know what direction you're heading. One step forward is one step closer to that ultimate goal, whatever that may be. Also, when you hit that ultimate goal, uh, don't stop there. Find another one. Start the journey again. Um, I think that was one of the, the biggest things uh, you know, for myself after getting knighthood. Um, it was not like a relieving moment. It was, uh, I kind of had panic. Um, I had had this goal for so very long and all the steps that took for it. And for me, right, it was an eight year thing. And um, once I achieved it, I went, is that it? What, what, what do I do with myself now? What do I do with my, my life? My, 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 my path is, you know, so many people would be like, oh, you won the game. Ugh, that destroyed me, just destroyed me uh, because it felt like an end and I didn't want to stop. So I didn't. I, uh, again, introspection. Um, I forged a different path. And I started there. I started down a different route. I had different goals. Um, how this game, um, how I played it, was, was now different. Um, it wasn't about me anymore. It was, it was more about what I could do for others and um, how I could give back and how, um, how to make sure that other folks had what they needed to get to the same place that, that I was so fortunate to make it to. Um, and then realizing there's three other belt paths. Uh, I could just do this all over again. And uh, that's, that's where I'm at going down different paths um, and shifting my focus um, and it has been extraordinarily gratifying um, it means it means more to me to be able to do things for others than to do things for myself um, I don't know if that's weird <laughs> um, but try it um, if that makes sense just um, Look out for another human being. Um, do do a good deed for somebody else. Um, give somebody motivation and a pep talk. Uh, send them a message in the morning, just telling them to have a great day. Um, give somebody advice when they need it. Um, offer to volunteer for things. Uh, help out with your park. Help out with your kingdom. Help out with you know uh, the game on the international scale. Um, look at what you can do. Uh, and do it. Um, again, we're, we're in this together and it's important to remember uh, sort of where we fit into that. Um, we're a community. 
and, and we should be there for each other. Um, it can be extremely helpful in, in times like this to be able to um, get out of your own um, space, to uh, stop thinking about you, um, what you can and cannot do, and um, what you can and cannot control in your life, uh, and instead look out to others and think of what you can do to improve their lives and their experiences and uh, just bring a bit of joy um, and help. Because if, if you are feeling this, then uh, every one of your friends and a bunch of strangers that could use a good friend, um, they're feeling it too. I can guarantee you that. That I am absolutely certain. Um, so, food for thought. Okay, um, does anyone have any questions? I know, I know we've sort of been over uh, a million things, uh, jumping from one to the other. Um, this class has been a little different than uh, what I normally do. Um, but I hope that this has been helpful in some way. Um, I'd rather leave it sort of uh, short and simple at this point. Um, I, I think it'd be good at this point to sort of have those uh, introspective moments for yourself. Um, and I'm here if you need me. I'm here if you need to talk it out. Um, if you need uh, some specific advice, uh, if you have uh, particular goals or, or things of that nature where uh, you're having a hard time dissecting it up a little bit more, um, what is quite literally the next um, box to check in your thing, um, let me know. So I am here, I'm available. Um, if you have any particular questions here and now, uh, please, by all means, um, send those in chat. And also, uh, if you have a question, the other folks in chat and folks that might be watching this in the future uh, might have those questions too. And um, they might not feel comfortable or secure um, asking those. So if you ask them, um, they'll be able to get those answers. Um, it's, always been a, it's always been a hard thing for me to do. Um, and that's something that I learned kind of... Uh, I also have a learning disability. <laughs> Ah, uh, I, I have all sorts of things. Um, and always felt like um, very self-conscious asking questions in class. Um, but then finding out how many of um, my classmates also had learning disabilities and uh, were very much lost a lot of the times. And uh, they never asked questions because they did not feel comfortable doing so in front of others. So they just never asked and they never learned. And uh, when I realized that was happening, um, I stopped um, being so self-conscious myself and instead of thinking of, oh gosh, what is I'm going to feel, I thought, if I do this, if I bite the bullet and uh, fight my own insecurities, I can help them. Um, so I started asking questions and uh, it ended up affecting us both. So um, please don't be afraid to reach out. Please don't be afraid to ask questions. Uh, there is no such thing as a stupid question. Um, there, you'll never know if you don't ask. So, please ask away. Um, and if you don't feel comfortable asking in this chat, um, that is perfectly fine too. Um, you can private message me. Um, also, I'm available on Discord. I can do private voice chats, I can do a small group chat, uh, whatever works for you. Um, I am more than willing to, to sit down with you and have those chats. Um, again, I do have I do have learning disabilities, so uh, I have a hard time with text, particularly. Um, but I do a whole lot of voice chats, and I do a lot of uh, teaching through voice and stuff. So um, let me know if you need help. Okay, I'm here. So on that, um, I'm gonna wrap stuff up. If you have any last things, please let me know. Uh, again, for credit. Be sure that you go on to the Nine Blades Discord and uh, use our handy dandy Amped Bot. Um, that is so very, so very good. Um, Ken, you are amazing. <laughs> Shout out to him. Um, yeah. Other than that, 
there is a 20 second delay so if you do have any last remarks any questions uh now is the time we will close this in about 20 seconds and as tradition uh the 20 second silly dance And always ending with Jess. Rajavia's Jess, yes. As is tradition. Okay. So, I think on that, we're gonna end it for tonight. Um, thank you so very much for, for everyone that has come out to watch this tonight. And uh, thank you to anyone in the future that's watching this video. Um, again, this has been Growth in Isolation. I am Admiral Ann Cash. Or as folks call me Admiral. And this is Admiral Second Union. Um, my parting words to you is never give up, never surrender, um, be safe, and look out for one another. <laughs>